Hi there, I'm Jen, this is Remembered Reads, and this is going to be a discussion of, of the books that I finished during the week of Translatathon, which are also books that I read for March Mystery Madness. March Mystery Madness is a month-long mystery and thriller-themed readathon, and Translatathon is a week-long readathon that just happened last week that encourages people to read translated I was going to say fiction, but I think it's actually fiction and nonfiction. I originally intended to read seven books for Translate-a-thon that were also mysteries, two novels and five graphic novels. In the end, I read one of the novels and three of the graphic novels because I started to hit mystery saturation, so I needed to read a few other things before proceeding with March Mystery Madness. So the first book that I picked up during that week was The Kiss Murder by Mehmet Murat Sommer. This, according to Goodreads, is the first book in his series about the Istanbul bull drag queen who also works as a computer hacker, is a martial arts expert, and solves crimes. But I think actually The Prophet Murder came out first. Whichever one is one or two, this is a series that I've been reading out of order. In this volume of the series, our sleuth is investigating the murder of one of the girls from the nightclub that they own, because did I mention that one of their other many careers is nightclub owner? It's interesting because in the early volumes of this series, the way the characters are written about is a little bit different than the way they are written about later in the series. Early in the series, it's very unclear as to whether a lot of the characters are drag queens or if they're trans women. Later in the series, it's clear that the vast majority of them are drag queens, but in the early ones, it's actually hard to tell. So having read this in reverse order, I think I was going in with a specific interpretation of the characters, and it surprised me how some of the descriptions happened in these earlier books, which I think is something I mentioned last year when I also read one of the earlier books in this series. And in this one in particular, I wondered how much of that was translation. In the later books, you get a very clear demarcation of when the main character is at work doing his computer programming job, he is always a he. He's presented as male, and when he's in his Audrey Hepburn drag queen persona, then we get she. And the pronoun use in this is very much more heavily weighted towards female, and I wonder if that was a translation issue that maybe the translator later worked out with the author or something like that, because uh, Turkish doesn't have gendered pronouns, so that is something that the translator would have come up with. It did make me wonder about that. In any case, that is probably more serious a discussion than this ridiculous series should ever garner, because this is, as with every volume in this series, really, really, really ridiculous. If the numerous hats that the main character wears didn't tip you off to the ridiculousness of that, uh, the, the over-the-topness of everything that happens in this would definitely tip you off. There is a scene in here where the girls from the club go to the funeral of this, their friend who's been murdered, and the discussions that they have about whether they should go dressed as men and women and whether the one character who goes in, in male dress is going to go and pray with the men or the women, and it's, it's so ridiculous. <laughs> so having a serious discussion about this feels silly because it is so silly. I would say that this book is actually paced a little bit better than most of the books in the series, because a lot of them do go into what happens with a lot of mysteries where they kind of go off the rails in the third act. Because this is such a ridiculous series, I don't mind that this tends to go off the rails at the end. But this volume didn't do that. There wasn't the same uh, compulsion to tie everything up, so we're left with some loose ends which I liked, although I think in a traditional mystery that's not necessarily what you would want. The writing is also a little bit clunkier in this one, whereas I think it flows a lot better in the later books. So this was fun to read just to compare to how the, the characters have changed and how the over-the-topness of things has actually increased, because in the, in the later volumes in the series, the author himself is a character in the books, and it, it just, it's so ridiculous. And this one is over-the-top, but it's not quite as ridiculous as the later ones. So it was still a lot of fun, and, but it was more interesting to go into this knowing what I know about how the rest of the series goes. So I would, I'd be curious to hear from people who read this series in order how they feel about the rest of the series. The remaining three books that I finished for the Translate-a-thon portion of March Mystery Madness were three books in the series Black Sad. This is a crime noir series starring anthropomorphic animals, written by Juan Diaz Carnales, and illustrated by Juanjo Guarnido. This is translated from Spanish. The art style in this is interesting. It's very detailed and oddly realistic for a series in which the main characters 
are anthropomorphic animals. I think it's also worth noting because I posted about this on Instagram and I had a couple of people comment things along the lines of, oh cute, and this is not really a cute series. This is very much a crime noir, and you would not give this series to a child, for example, because I think with a lot of anthropomorphic animals there's a tendency to think this must be a kid's book, and it's definitely not. This contains a lot of fairly graphic violence, it contains a lot of sexual partial nudity, so you probably wouldn't want to give this to your seven-year-old, especially through the first volume, which is a very traditional noir-esque story about corruption and politicians and whatnot. The, the contrast of the animal faces and the very traditional noir story is, it's just fascinating. It's a little bizarre. So I quite liked that. I liked the disconnect of the the faces of the characters to what was happening and to the rest of the art style. This very kind of dark, gritty, traditional detective thriller with fluffy animal heads. And I really liked the art style and I thought it was an interesting thing to contrast with the story. The second volume of this is called Arctic Nation and I, this one didn't work so well for me. Visually I thought it was still great, but story-wise it was basically a given an American Southern 1950s segregation Ku Klux Klan kind of setting. And the, the reason it didn't 100% work for me outside of the visual side was that within the story we're given polar bears and arctic wolves and w arctic foxes and whatnot, animals that are seasonally white, but aside from the polar bears in most seasons, you know, aren't all the time. So that part didn't make sense unless we were saying that the animal piece is just symbolic and that we're not supposed to imagine them as the actual animals, except that the lead detective is a cat, has a cat head and talks a lot about being a cat and there are jokes about cats having nine lives. In the first volume, there's someone that he shoots who uh, has a lizard face and talks about being cold-blooded. So the animals are these animals, but the, the racial element doesn't work because some of those species of animals change color with the seasons, one. And two, when it gets into the couples, they're often different species and it's things that don't make sense unless we're doing this in a completely abstract way, except we're not because they reference the species. So that story didn't work for me because it was mixing the symbolism too much. It just didn't work given what we've been told about how the different animals are seen as different animals and that it's not just a kind of arbitrary symbolism piece. That story didn't work for me, but artistically it was still beautiful. It was visually really nice to look at. The third volume again was a return to a more traditional crime noir story. There's a great image of the detective, you know, this one rabbit headed character by the ears. But I didn't necessarily feel that that did anything new beyond what the first volume did. So this is a series where I just absolutely loved the art and I like the concept. So for the first volume I was definitely sold on it because it was so interesting to see those different elements together. Still, I think visually it was definitely worth checking out and definitely worth reading. Before I go, I know Translatathon had some challenges and as with most readathons I don't intentionally hit the challenges but I do like to see if I hit any of them after the fact so I'm just gonna pull those up. Alright, here we go. Challenge number one is to read a translated graphic novel and I did, I read three of them, those three volumes of Black Sad. Challenge number two is to read a translated book with LGBTQIA plus themes, and I did. I read The Kiss Murder fulfills that prompt. Number three is read a translated book that has your initials on the cover, and I don't think I fulfilled that. Uh, number four is read a translated book from a genre that you don't normally reach for, and I didn't do that because everything I read was a mystery. Number five is read a translated book written by a woman and or translated by a woman. And while the Black Said series is, is written and drawn by men, it was actually translated by a woman, Patricia Rivera. So that does fulfill that prompt. So I actually did succeed on most of the Translatathon prompts accidentally, so that's not bad. If you were participating in Translatathon, I'd love to hear what you were reading. If you combined it with March Mystery Madness, I'd love to hear about that even more. All right, that's it for now. Ciao.